Get down. Uh, I have to reintroduce your government officials or workers in government kasi para makilala ninyo. Uh, spend time with me in coming here. At ang unang tatawagin ko po ay si yung nag-introduce sa akin, isa itong Ilocano, uh, taga Isabela, Secretary Silvestre Rovelio. Uh, ang sunod po yung ating uh, Department of Affairs Secretary Enrique Manalo. At ang ating laking kotabato to pero of uh, Ilocano ancestry, Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, the Defense Secretary. Uh, isang general po to noon, uh, when I was the mayor of Davao City, Ibata pa rin siya noon. He was assigned in my uh, area. At siya yung nagdala ng scout rangers doon panahon ng magulo na Pilipinas. Uh, ito po ay uh, laking Cotabato City. And uh, sabi ni Pastor Kibuloy nga, uh, classmate niya ito si Delphine Lorenzana. And he was the valedictorian of his class. Nung nasa PMA siya, valedictorian rin. Kaya mahusay na tao, uh, very industrious. Noon na-assign siya, guwapo siya, matangkad. Pero ngayon, guwapo pero walang buhok. <laughs> si Secretary Ramon Lopez po, siya po yung nagdala ng gogo negosyo. Uh, he is now connected with government yung sa small scale and medium industries. Siya po yung pinag... Uh, I'm spending billions dito sa gustong yung kayong umuwi at nagkaroon kayo ng idea uh, we will support the small, medium uh, industries para turuan mo na kayo tapos uh, nagbubuhos po ako ng pera dyan. Uh, pahiramin kayo ng gobyerno at uh, well in the fullness of God's time uh, inshallah you have to pay uh, the government but he is very good another uh, secretary po sa Department of Transportation classmate ko po to sa law school sa San Beda ito yung valedictorian namin Arthur Tugade Ilocano galing Tugigaraw ito bilyonaryo na to uh, is well known Nung college pa kami, nagtatrabaho na sa Delgado Brothers. And on his own, he's already a billionaire. Ang ating uh, secretary sa energy, uh, si yung manager noon ng NAYA, si Alfonso Cusi. At ang ating presidential communications office, ang happy ho doon si Secretary Martin Andanar. At isa pong another Ilocano. Marami po sila dito sa cabinet ko. Because sila yung mahusay. Si uh, General Esperon noon is the Secretary National Security Advisor ko po. Then uh, Isang uh, guwapong lalaki, pwede nyo itong pakantahin maya. Actually, I don't know if uh, saan ang gusto niya, hindi ko alam. Mag il il Chief uh, Presidential Legal Counsel, o meron ping gustong, gustong, gustong mag-artista, pati uh, uh, singer. Singer yan siya. We have uh, Secretary Abelia, ang Presidential Spokesman. Si Secretary Abul Khair Alonto from Mindanao, Mindanao Development Authority. Marami akong mga kapatid na Muslim sa aking kab kabinete, si Secretary Giling Mamunjong. Tess daho. Another Ilocano at magiging cabinet member to one of these days. So I have to talk to him. 
Si ito yung pinapadala ng ating gobyerno noon, uh, particularly at the time ni President Gloria Arroyo, yung may mga mass evacuation, siya yung inuutosan. Si General ito noon, General Roy Simato. Ilocano rin. Uh, at ito naman ay taga Maynila. At uh, yung sila dito, husband and wife, Senator Alan Cayetano, and his lovely wife, Mayor Lani Cayetano. Alam mo, sa lahat ng travel ko abroad, nandiyan palagi yan si Senator. He's with me also as an advisor uh, sa lahat na bagay. And always kasama si Lani. They are inseparable. Kaya wala akong kaduda-duda na mabait talaga ito si Alan. <laughs> yung nag-iiwan ng asawa, yun ang mga talagang walang... <laughs> Congressman Anasito Bertiz, uh, sa ano ito, uh, sectoral, party list, OFW. Uh, And uh, sa Shard of Airs ng ating Shard J, Imelda Panolong sa Riyad. <laughs> Alam mo ba ang pangalan nito ni Aime? <laughs> we, we only know her as Aime. Kanina, kanina ko lang talaga nalaman. <laughs> Aime Marcos. Ang pangalan ni Aime Marcos is Governor Maria Imelda Josefa Marcos. Uh, otherwise known as uh, Aime. Pero ang tawag ko na sa iyo ngayon, ma'am, the better actually kung Filipino, Josefa. So, beginning today, I would address you as Josefa. <laughs> Then we have uh, the MMDA chairman on. Uh, he ran for, uh, but he will be running again. Si Francis Tolentino. He's a lawyer. <laughs> At mahal kong kababayan. Uh, outside of the ASEAN countries, kasi I had to travel to visit every member state because we are hosting the ASEAN summit this year. So I had to go out and got the feel of everybody, the heads of state or whatever, dito sa programa na gusto nilang ipasok so that when the time comes, which is the meeting, wala na hong uh, smoothly na at pinag-aralan na namin lahat kung anong what comes up and what, what, what goes down dito sa aming ASEAN. Very important ito po sa ating bayan. But outside of ASEAN, I have, not, I have received so many invitations. I would not name the, the, the countries because they might, you know, uh, uh, tinanggihan ko lahat. But ako ho ang namili dito. And I was very gratified that the, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the King, uh, invited me to visit you. You know, Let me explain why. Oh, kalimutan ko, Brad ko to. Pariho kami, may, may lola is uh, Maranao. Kapwa ko Maranao to. Si Dabs Mamao. Dabs wala ka sa listahan. Saksakin mo yung... He's, a, he's my classmate sa San Beda, and on top of that, he is my fraternity brother. So marami dito ang Ilocano, pati Maranao. Wala nga ako nakita ang Bisaya. Kulang. Ah, Martin, ang dana. Anak siya ni Wensi. Mrs. Lau, yung 
uh, ang danar noon. Ito yung anak nga. Mas, mas guwapo to. Uh, kasi yung ibang puntan ko na lugar, tinatanong kung hindi yung anak kong... Basti na yan. <laughs> si Andanar, kung nasaan. Uh, kung wala dito, iniiwan ko kasi ang attention ng public mapunta sa kanila. Uh, sabi ko, dito muna kayo makinig sa akin kasi maraming importante yung sasabihin sa inyo. Well, I, it is of our national interest that I visit first the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Nandito yung karamihan ng ating kayo, mga kababayan. You are not, not just citizens of the, of the Republic of the Philippines. You are the assets. Ang ating gross national product is uh, medyo malaki. Part of the economy of the country, part of the money that is driving the economics of our country are the remittances that you sent to the Philippines. Importante talaga na makausap ko sa kanil. And I am very happy that the warmest of all warm welcomes dito nakuha ko sa Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And in the days to come, they have promised to pass legislations that would really improve your lives are better than what, what, was, what was before. And I'm, I'm almost, I can only thank Allah for uh, uh, bringing me here in this country. Marami silang, marami kaming pinag-usapan. It would take the whole evening to, to, to see them all, but uh, in the days to come, mamalaman rin ninyo. So nauna ako dito. Not only because uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is a very important ally, we have to build good bilateral relations in the fields of economy, trade and commerce, investments, and to think that we get our, most of our oil in this country. They are fueling our industries. So yung inuna ko talaga, yung pinaka-importante sa ating bayan. Filipino workers, the welfare, and the importance of really establishing alliances. We have agreed on so many things. Uh, it would be a short list uh, if there is a, a publication of this thing, but you will know when it is there. Ngayon, pupunta na lang rin ako ng Qatar, pati Bahrain, because it's nearby, and there are also Filipinos. Ngayon, Bakit ako nanalo? You know, sa totoo lang, magkababayan man tayong lahat, huwag na tayong magbulahan. Hindi man ninyo ako kilala. I mean, mga taga Davao, taga Mindanao, ba't kayo hindi niyo ako kilala? And uh, I got almost uh, 16 million. The 6 million was my sheer majority above Rojas. Hindi ko ma... I cannot even fathom, hindi ko ma, di na ko makabot. I cannot stretch uh, deep enough to, to, to get why. When ako naman walang pera, hindi nyo kilala, ang partido namin, PDP, and it was just a minority uh, sa Pilipinas. Kukunti lang kami. And I, I, I carried the banner of PDP. But what was the, the rationale or the reason behind bakit ako nanalo ng ganong karami? No. Baba, baba, baba. Alam mo kasi, I did not make any so many promises. Wala akong, uh, ako nung presidential debates, if you have nanood kayo nyo, I just had a bullet, sabi ko lang. Kasi sanay rin ako na, you know, I've been a trial prosecutor all these years. I knew that the one and a half minute given us would cannot give us anything. So nung sinabi, you're only given one minute and a half, nag-ana ako na bullet lang statement. 
So, ang una kong sinabi sa inyo, what was the reason, the rationale? It was in the messaging. Nanalo ako sa yung nilabas kong pangako, which I consider very, very sacred. Nangako ako sa inyo na ito ang gawin ko. But five. Sabi ko sa inyo, I will stop corruption in government. At uh, kayong nakauwi na doon, at kayong you have already maybe stayed there a few days, even at the airport, I prohibited uh, opening of baggages and inspected. Kami nung mga mayor, kami yung mga congressman, governor, we are waved through. Magsaludo pa, sir. Despite of the train of our luggages, ang galit ako palagi, kaya ako talagang pinangako ko to. Kasi yung makikita ko minsan, kasunod ko OFW. Tapos, alin pa yung kailangan nila, binubuksan yung bag, kung maraming perfume, kinukunan ng dalawa isa. So all these years, uh, but there was one time a, a, a uh, returning OFW from this from Macau. May dala-dala siyang hand-carried lang kasi maliit yung TV. Pagdating doon sa customs, binara. So ako, nagtumitingin lang ako. Eh, nagmakaawa na yung ali. Eh, papuntahin pa siya doon sa kahiro for assessment. Hindi. <laughs> Alam mo, anak lang rin ako ng mahirap. I never tasted the luxuries of life, just like yung iba. Provinciano. Kami mga lahat dito, Provinciano, actually. Bebot from Isabela. Tugade is from Tugigarao. Lahat yan. Esperon is from uh, Pangasinan. Roy Simato is uh, Ilocos Norte. O, o, uh, you know, mahirap lang. A kaya ako, mainit ako dyan sa abuso sa gobyerno. Yung mga military niyan, sasabihin niyo. When I was mayor, they were all assigned at one time or another, dumaan yan sila ng Region 11, including the world. I really hate oppression. Lalo na yon sa mga mahirap. Hindi na ako mahirap ngayon kasi bubulahin ko lang rin kayo. Pero dumaan ako sa ganong sitwasyon. Na dumating kami sa Dabao na walang wala. Tapos we had to build a shanty just behind Ateneo de Dabao University. A wetland dyan noon eh. And to think that we suffered a demolition. And you would never believe that a wetland could be titled in the name of private persons. It could be a government land or public land. Kaya ako, nandiyan pa, I was four years old. Malala ko yung demolition and I could remember my mother crying. Uh, pati yung kapatid ko ang babae. But uh, it, uh, hindi ko malaman noon, wondering why they were crying. At ang tatay ko, I just sat there in the one of the sari-sari stores in front of the, yung bahay na itinayo. Just look at it aimlessly. Wala naman siyang sinabi. Hindi ako nagbubula, totoo to. You can ask anybody. At saka magpunta kayo doon, bisita kayo sa bahay ko. I could afford now, maybe I could borrow money. But the problem is, sabi ko sa, nga, sa anak ko, pati mga kaibigan ko, wait, 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 sabi ko. Tanda na ako, 72 years old. And I do not want to burden my family paying the rest of the amortization. Okay na ako dito, sabi ko. So, yung, yung babae na alaala ko, sinabi ko talaga sa, Padre, palusutin mo na yan. Sabi ng putang ina niya, Bakit, bakit ka ba nakikialam? Sabi ko, magpakilala ako sa iyo. Hindi, hindi kita binabastos. Mayor Duterte ako ng Davao. Putang ina mo, sipain kita dito ngayon. Hindi, hindi ako nagyayabang. Uh, ano? What use would it be bagyabang ako sa inyo? Hindi na ako makatakbo. 
And I know that I will not remain popular or throughout if, uh, if I could uh, live until uh, five years and a few months from now. Ang shala. So, okay lang. Ganon kami ka hirap at ganon ang tingin ko sa mga kababayan natin. Hayaan mo yan mga mayaman. Hindi na, hindi na nga ilangan ng ano yan, ng, ng presidente. They do not even need a mayor. They can afford to uh, hire their own mayor. Kaya ang tao muna. So itong corruption, I have fired many. I even fired, I even fired a cabinet member. Nag-meeting kami lahat. Tapos nga sabi nga ni Bebot kahapon, bakit mo naman sinikreto mo lang sana? Inagalit ako kasi nagsinungaling. At early on, nung first meeting namin sa cabinet, sinabi ko talaga, no corruption. <laughs> And yet, he was not into money making. Diyan pa sa papel, diyan kami nagtalo. At sabi niya, hindi daw niya alam. E eh, samantala, anong sumulat ng papel, yung legal officer niya. Hindi ko po naman, secretary ka, hindi mo alam kung anong sinusulat ng abogado mo. Kaya ako nagputok, sabi ko, you're lying, you're fired. Get out of this room. Sabi ko, the first whiff of corruption, tatanggalin kita. Hindi na ako maghintay na makuha mo yung pera. Baka masulo mo, wala na kami. Pangbili ng bahay. And uh, I also fired another one. Yan lang, patawag-tawag, tapos parinig. Noong narinig ko, tinawag ko yung lahat ng directors, tell me the truth. Sabi ko, i-assign ko kayo doon sa putang ina ninyo. Tumento to ano. So ito, nagparinig, kung ano lang pinag-usapan ng aid niya, yun na yun. Anong klaseng salita yan? Yun na yun. Ano ang sabihin? Yun ang pinag-usapan ng aid mo pati. Kaya tinawa ko, right on that meeting, director, sinabi ko, yung aid ko, si Bong, sabi ko tawagan mo, tell him to tender his resignation within two days. So ang nilagay ko si military nung kaka-retire lang chief of staff, si Bisaya. And I will be firing more. Ito na yung mga director's level. Talagang tatanggalin ko lahat. Nanabi ko no corruption. No corruption. <laughs> Habang wala kayong narinig na tumatanggap ako, huwag kayong tumanggap kasi na patay. I would, I, I would not hesitate to really humiliate you. Pero ako nabigla talaga ako. And the other one that I fired was with me when I first ran as mayor in 1988. I've been mayor for 23 years at Davao. I've never lost an election, actually. I was once upon a time a congressman also. Tuloy-tuloy na ako from vice mayor to the presidency. Kaya ganun na lang ang utang ng loob ko. Kaya siguro naman, stricto talaga ako sa Davao. Kaya yun nga, baka yun ang nagustuhan ng tao. When just everyone re-elected and re-elected and re-elected. Ngayon, I would not have filed my certificate of candidacy. Sinabi ko sa anak ko na babae, pag hindi ka tatakbo ng mayor, hindi ako tatakbo ng presidente. Siya yun una nagsabi na, ano bang gawain mo dyan? Sabi niya, matanda ka na, you retire. Pero I, I really do not know. I, maybe it's because of destiny. Uh, napatakbo talaga ako. Pumayag rin siya tumakbo ulit si Inday. So yun yung kapalit ko ngayon, yung mayor doon, yung anak ko. Yun yung nanununtok ng sirip. Bubogbog talaga na tao eh. Maldita yan. Sabi ko, kasi sa kanya ko iniwan. Kasi siya lang yung nakuha niya yung arte ko. Yung style, pati magalaw. 
Lahat sabi ko, siya lang ang ano talaga pinaka in the family when she talks. Ako, tatay, ayaw ko magipag-away ng anak. Tahimik na lang ako. Pero yung maliit pa yan, siya talaga. Yung may gifts na dumagdating sa bahay ko, diretso sa kwarto niya. Hindi dadaan ng sala yan. Doon sa kwarto, doon sa may mili bago niya itapon yung sobra niya. Ganon katindi ang babae na yan. So, she's doing good. And, uh, Huwag ninyong magkamali kayo tatakbuhin yung presidyo, mabubugbugin kayo lahat yan. <laughs> oh, hanggang mayor lang siya, huwag na ninyong... Anyway, uh, yung mga divinets of life, maybe. Nasabi ko lang para maintindihan ninyo ako. Kaagad, ma-impart ko na, ma-transmit ko na sa inyo yung mindset ko or the paradigm. Ako servisyo lang talaga. I've said the long, the, the beginning and the end of my term as president would always be public interest. Nothing higher, nothing lower. Diyan ako, nakatuto. So I expect everybody to work. And if you are in government, work hard. And if you have been used to extra income, kagaya ng hindi naman lahat, customs, pati BIR, do not. Do not. Noon, yung sweldo ninyo, ano lang yan, yung tip lang yan. Di, sabi ko. Wag na wag, kasi ang nilagay ko rin dyan sa BIR, isang Ilocano rin. Ayaw ko, bakit? Puro Ilocano. Hindi ko nga sinadya yan. <laughs> Attorney Dulay. You know, when we were studying law, magkaiba-iba kaming eskwelahan. Si Dulay, yung BIR ngayon, taga Baguio, pati si Bebot Belio, mag- mga probinsyano yung opisya, akala niyo ito gawin nila. Puro Ilocano, Isabela, si Dulay, Baguio. Sa harap naman, ako pati si Yasay. So Yasay, si GUP sa Padre Faura, sila sa Ateneo, ako sa San Beda. But we, we mixed uh, each other very well. Kaya nung hanggang lumaki na kami, Kilala ko na yung karakter nila. Kaya yung pinili ko talaga, garantisado ako. Na yun, walang house show yung mga tao na yun. At sa puro na mayayaman. Totoo. Ito, God is, Bebot is landed estate ito. Ako lang ang mahirap dyan sa... <laughs> Kaya, I never signed anything. Nandyan man in front of the public... Hindi ako nakapirma na mangulikta ako ng allowance extra, except my salary. 130,000. Tapos dalawa ang pamilya ko. Ay, paano ko buhay? <laughs> yung isa talaga, yung nanay ni Inday, she's a half German, half Filipino. Zimmerman, naghiwalay kami noon, Elizabeth. Tapos, uh, yun, anold talaga. It was an anold uh, marriage. Hindi ko kayang German. Ngayon yun lang. Dito lang ako sa Tagabulacan. Tagabalensuela, mas medyo ako ako. Ano, mabuhay ako dito. Yung isa, papatayin talaga ako noon. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yun yan. So lahat tayo nawala ng income. You take uh, so much money before, you can buy a car for all of the children, maybe buy a house. But hindi na pwede yan ngayon kasi nagbabantay talaga. And the reason why I fired the other guy, even the whiff, not exactly na magkapera ka. Kasi tinitignan ko yung budget, it's almost 150 billion yung sa irrigation. Kasi sa irrigation, wala nang bayad ngayon. Libre na ang mga farmers sa water. Yun ang pinangako ko sa kanila. No more irrigation fees. Libre na ang tubig. Sabi ng mga taga uh, NIA na, Sir, minsan pa naman, malayo yung tubig. Minsan wala. 
Pwede ko maghanap ka ng tubig. Wala na mag-ihi ka dyan. Sabay-sabay kayong lahat. Basta problema ninyo yan. Hindi na problema ng taong bayan yan. Maghanap kayo kasi yan ang kayo binabayaran ngayon. To produce water. Not to regulate the prices of water. Para pang nawasa lang yan. So, yun ang walaan kayo ng income. Bear with me. It's only be about six years. Very easy to traverse. But you have to slow down a little bit sa income ninyo. Ang una siguro, you can eat every night outside. No, di... Medyo magluto na kayo ng ano ninyo. Kasi puro hirap itong ating gadaanan. I am a... a it's almost a transitional president. And tend to stop corruption. I, I, I will succeed. Kasi talagang labanan kami dito. I will not compromise. I will not compromise. So do not come to me. Makiusap ka sa akin ng negosyo. I do not entertain businessmen going to my office. May dyan sa Pasig. Hindi rin ako, to, ayaw ko tawagin niyang Malacanang Palace. Hindi naman palasyo yan. At saka dyan, tanongin mo si Amy. Ma maaga ang multo dyan, may araw pa lang puto. <laughs> Kaya ako natutulog doon sa barracks. Noon sa PSG, doon, doon, dito tayo. Kasi medyo clear dito ang ano. Walang kanyan medyo. And I do not even say it in public. I said say my office. And dito kasi para mamalaman lang ninyo, but uh, I usually address uh, ako as workers of government, period. And uh, I do not allow yung mga plate number for cabinet members. Six ang cabinet eh. Yung congressman, pati senador, bahala sila. So, yung isa, sinabi ko, I fired him also. Nagwawang-wang. Yung, I noticed in several meetings in Mindanao, pag magdating, maraming bodyguard. Eh, kami-kami lang noon, yun din naman, wala naman interesadong pumatay sa amin. Why so suddenly you strut around? And you, hindi nga ako eh. Kasi when I was mayor, I never really allowed yung wang-wang sa dama. Inday, ayaw rin niya yan. Mayabang ang dating eh. Ang bugiro ba? Nakukurnihan ako nang tumatayo, balihibo ko na. That's why I do not travel around in Manila. Because whether I like it or not, ang PSG would have to clear. Kasi kung tabihan ka, sabi nila, baka karbam. Panahon mo na, panahon mo na talaga. But whether you like it or not, you lose your freedom. Pag presidente ka, wala na talaga. Pag magsabi ka, gusto ka magpunta niyan, biglaan. You have to inform them several hours, they were good at to do the cleaning, whatever is there is to be cleaned. Wala na akong freedom. I use the helicopter even at night. Kaya pag tumama yan sa isang building dyan, Makati, mataas, yun na yun. Uh, you call in Robredo and you have a new president. Galitan tayo ng buhay. So I do not I, I, I sell them. Yun lang yung mga abogado. But only those important events that would be meaningful to the life of the Philippines. Otherwise, yung mga ayaw ko. Tsaka, yun lang magastos umuwi ako because I, my comfort zone is Davao. If I want to regain my equanimity because you, you tend to lose your pati stress, I go home just when I, makita ko lang yung kama ko. Maamoy ko lang yung kumot ko na once a year lang nilalabhan. <laughs> yung nakakilala sa akin, alam nila yan. May, may sekreto ako dyan. But uh, yung peanuts, yung comic strip na peanuts, si Linus pati si ano, uh, totoo yan. 
Totoo yan. Oh, security blanket. But I, I, I don't know if I have this what inferiority of... Pero yan. <laughs> Ganon. So I go home. That's about the only expense that I really incur. Sometimes I take the... Usually I take the commercial flights. So sa... Balik ako sa corruption. It has to stop. And everybody is listening because live man ito. Time and again. Wala na rin ako. I'm 72 years old. Kung sana noon pa para ma-enjoy ko. But even if you give me one tanker of money, what will I do with it? Hindi na ako makakain, hindi na ako makainom. Then I use the because of Berger's disease. Kaya sabi ko nga, kaya sa Dabao, walang sigarilyo. Nung sinabi ng doktor na huwag ka manigarilyo kasi mapuputol yung paa mo, pati yung kamay mo liliit, pati yung ano mo liliit talaga. <laughs> <laughs> alam, alam yung mga nurse, pati doktor, dextimated kasi babae. Yung circulation, ang Burgess disease is a, is a malfunction of the brain. So yung oxygenation ko, dahil sa kasigarilyo ko, nagkaroon ako na acquired, acquired yan eh, Burgess disease. It's not really a disease, it's a malfunction due to the brain. Uh, but uh, you know, ang contributory dyan is smoking. So I have to use the oxygenation. Kasi yung sensor ko, yung mga nigarilyo kayo, yung sensor ninyo na the damage, Ang breathing may pagkagtulog ka, eh, kung gising ka, because you're conscious of the oxygenation sa katawan, pero yung sa matulog ka, gano'n na lang yan. Parang himatayo na. Eh. So, lagyan ka ng oxygen. Kaya baga, masyado makapal ang dito ko. Sa kakatusok yan, gabi-gabi. Ah... Uh, Dito tayo sa droga. Dito, wala rin akong, I'm sorry, wala rin akong pasensya talaga. Nung sabi nila na maraming namatay, in Davao City for the 23 years, kung kami ko lang mga 6,700 meron, hindi ko kayo bubulahin. Eh, lumaban nang, sinabi ko naman sa police, go after them, arrest them, if it's still possible. But you are confronted with a violent resistance and you think that your life is in danger, shoot! <laughs> it has afflicted or contaminated four million of the Filipinos. The, it's, four million is no joke. And some of them, long-term use of shabu shrinks the brain. So out of the 4 million, nung panahon ni Santiago 3, yung akin 1-8 so plus, hindi ko malaman kung sino yung talagang wala ng utak o ilan pa ang natirang matino. And these are the people that would be a burden to the community and poses a danger to society. Kasi pag lango na, they do not know, they cannot discern what is right and what is wrong. Ang mahirap niyan, ang mga abogado dito is, you know, kung sabihin ng, ng abogado niya, eh nakahay yan eh. Sira yung utak eh. So, ang sa atin kasi, you must be conscious of what you're doing. So, kung pinatay yan, rape yung mga bata, yan yung uso ngayon eh, rape ang bata, patayin. Tapos sabihin doon sa korte, lango yan siya, he was not in his right faculties of the mind. God, there is no crime. Or when he, panahon na niya, during the trial arraignment, uh, guilty or not guilty, tapos talagang wala na. Hindi na magsagot ng tama. O, anong pangalan mo? Oh, wala kami, nagpasyal ka kami. Ganun yan eh. Pagkagamon, pagkagamon, he cannot stand trial. Because he has to be sane. And when you are insane, wala ng kaso. 
So, tignan ninyo statistics in the past years without attributing to any term of any president. There were 77,000 drug-related deaths sa aking bayan. Putang ina kayo, sir. Tapos sabihin mo lang. Ah, talaga kaya Sabihin mo lang na itong mga hindi ko na pangalan kasi ayaw ko ng away. Yung mga human rights. Sabihin nga pati yung mga European utang ina to mga ulol na to. Gusto ako ng ipakulong. Doon sa, uh, magpunta doon sa inter International Criminal Court. For, sabi nila, 10,000. Masyado marami naman. Eh, siguro, yung lumaban sa polis. You know, when I first days, uh, I fired nine police generals for or in Shabu as protector, as the financier themselves, o sa si... It's a co-conspiracy yan. Kasi, ang, no, ang, ang, ang drug product, producer, kung walang runner, walang negosyo. Kung ito naman mga runner, wala siya, walang negosyo. So there is no trafficking of drugs. Buy and sell. Kailangan mo sirain ito because it is an apparatus. Dito ang nagpo-produce, pati yung nagtatagbo. Kaya sabihin ng mga pare, ah, ano yan, ah, pinapatay niya yung mahirap. Sabi ko, what can I do? You're a criminal. I have to destroy the apparatus. I have to kill the drug uh, producers. And Kasi kung may buhayin ako dyan sa dalawa, walang mangyari sa bayan natin. Now it's 4 million. <laughs> Tapos yung pinakaunang general na sinibako was the police aid. Isang kandidato. Anak ka ng... Maisip-isip ko lang kung nanalo itong gagon to. <laughs> Tapos yung police general niya, aid niya, police aid, naging police chief, Philippine National Police, you can imagine the tragedy of our country. In a way, tama yung kinig kayo sa akin. Sabi ko, talagang uubusin ko to. That, uh, yung mayor ako, talagang, I mean, I was mayor, I said, do not destroy my city. Do not fuck with my... <laughs> Wag kang mag-ano, laruin mo ang aming mga anak because they are our tomorrow. Mahirap lang ako, kaya natin lahat. At one time or another, pagtanda natin, which is your to come, sila yung magbibili ng oxygen. Need Siya yung bili ng medisina. Siya yung magsubo ng lugaw sa bunga nga mo. Kung gaguhin mo sila, saan tayo magkita-kita? Sa plaza? Doon tayo matulog. Kasi yung anak mo, bangag eh. Kaya ito pa ang isa. Kayo. Palagi ko talagang binabanggit kayo. You know, you have to uproot your lives. To be away and endure the loneliness of being in another country, magprangkap. Tinitiis mo yan. Dano na lang ang pinagdaanan ng iba. At ayaw ko na lang sabihin dito. The things or the events that they, had, they have to endure para makapadala ng pera. Pagkatapos doon sa Pilipinas, languin mo ng sabo or ang anak ma-rape dahil sa mga... What is justice there? Tapos here comes an idiot says that you are a violator of the human right. Ah, shut up. <laughs> Pati yung si ano, sinabi ko talaga, you go to hell. 
ye presiden tenang do not chastise me in public when i was mayor okay yon but i now carry the sovereignty of the state and you do not have that fucking thing of you reprimand me in public go to the united nations ask for an investigation of the proper body in human rights then pag sinabi ng korte na ako ay kukulong, pakulong ako ng problema. I will, I will, pagpakulong ako para sa Pilipino. Eh, total, maghanap ko na lang rin. <laughs> ano ba naman, eksibent ito, what do you expect? With, with the ailments that I have, eksibent, anong sakit mo? I'll answer you this. Tatay mo ilang taon? Eksibente? Ano yung medisina niya? Ito, high blood, gano'n, sa kidney, oh. <laughs> Yun ang akin. So, huwag ka magtanong kung I am in, in the best of health. Matanda na ako. Pero I have this, before I go, gusto ko lang gawain ito para sa bayan ko. Stop my country. So, nabi ko, do not destroy the Philippines. Because I will destroy you. Prangka prangka antay. Do not render this our sons and daughters. Kasi gawain kitang inotel. Pasabugin ko lang spinal mo dyan. Wheelchair bound ka na buhay mo. Ibigay ko sa iyo yung gusto mo. Bakit ikaw lang ha? You know, How many years do you toil tirelessly just to earn the first comfort money? Makasave ka. Putang ina itong mga siya. Itong mga animal na to, di kok siya bo. In two months time, putang ina di are billionaires. Hmm. Kaya walang, walang atrasan dyan. Human rights or no human rights. Wala pa na kung sabi ko, I will kill you. Kung hindi kayo bingi, you're suffering from your deft and dumb. Sabi ko, I will kill you. Wala pa ba na kung pinatay hanggang ngayon. Eh, sabihin nila, ayaw pa lang mga polis. Eh, marami mo yan sila. Eh, nandito ang iba, nakatindig niya sa inyo. Hari. <laughs> Bakit ako ang pasangin nila, no? Because, hindi tayo nakaintindihan. Yung mga bagay na sirain mo ang aking bayan, hindi talaga kita palulusutin. My God, baski yan ang mayor ako mag ka ng bata tapos patayin mo. mag ka ng pamilya tapos nakawan mo. Sige yan sila, lista dyan ngayon. Sa Manila, nakikinig yung mga putang ina yun. O, oh, ito ha. Ah. Yung na-rape yan at takas. Kanya yun. Huh? May sinabi ba ako na bahay pati pamilya? General lang, general statement. Hindi kita palulusutin. Anak mo, Bakit? You know, by what universal, by what universal right do you impose? Patayin mo ang anak ko? Rapein mo? Sino, huwag mo na yan. Forget about human rights. Forget about the law. By what equation in this universe do you have the right to destroy the life of a person? Alam mo ang una? What right do you have? Kasi pag ang isang anak o dalawa na sa droga, it destroys the family and it becomes dysfunctional. Ganun eh. That is simple justice. Huwag na yung mga pilosopi dyan, mga or si Huxley about uh, death and life and 
crime and punishment. Never mind about that. They're all philosophy. Eh, simple lang. Sinong may nagbigay sa iyo? Nung? Sirain mo. Remember, remember, na pag may isang bugok na dyan, this pa, hiwalay yan sa asawa. Pag hiwalay sa asawa, that is the cause of the sabo, or the drug. Pag hiwalay sa asawa, ang pamilya lulutang na yan. There's no father at usually pag ano, maghiwalay. Kaya ang hindi malaman, kayo nakikinig, ako magharap sa camera, hindi lang ninyo alam kung anong ginagawa ninyo sa kapwa ninyong tao. Kaya putang ina, papatayan ko talaga. Bubuisit ako na naman. Criminality, isa pa yan. Noong una, mag, magbabae ang mga estudyante yan pagka dark corners, yung balahibo nila dito sa, ano ba tawag nyo dito sa amo? Tangkugo. Nape, what was the nape in Tagalog? Ito mga Tagalog na ito, marunong salit. Ayaw ko yan, hindi ko ma-pronounce. Ayan, hindi ko mapag-uwi lang. Hindi naman tayo mayaman eh. Bakit ba? Nagpapadala ba ko yun ng kutsi doon? Kali, pa-edukasyon. So they have to travel. Diyan sa po, sinihold up. Diyan sa po, pinagbabaril yung nasa... Nagtitindi ka ng babae dyan, tapos lango ka, barilin mo. Kasi pagdating sa istasyon, sabi daw ni Guardian Angel nga demonyo yung nakatindig dyan. Kaya idaan mo lang sa ganun. Tapos itong iyo. Ulol. Ang, ang, ang sabi pa sa akin, ang suggestion, tinan mo suggestion ng mga, pag nandito, pagsasampaling ko yan, wala kayo dito ang ina ninyo. Salvage ko kayo. Alam mo, sabi nila, magtayo daw ako ng mga clinics all around the city. Tapos, wag na lang daw patayin. Wag na i-demanda kasi it is an health issue. Bullshit health issue. Ikaw yung pumasok dyan. Ang maging health issue yan. Tapos, itong pinakatorpe sa lahat. Kaya ako talaga galit eh. They are imposing their own morality and the values. When after all, sila yung nag-una dito. What made them rich? Industrialized countries. It was at the expense of the Arab oil. They, they invaded uh, the Middle East and divided it into countries. At see, uh, what made them rich? What fueled their production and everything? It was oil. And they were getting almost for free from the Middle East. That is why I said uh, they have the legitimate kayak uh, tayo rin. 400 years uh, Spaniards. Then another 50 years American. Kaya ako may, may sama talaga ng loob ko rin. Just like ito sila ngayon. Yun, yun ang mahirap dyan. Ngayon they want to impose. Magtayo daw ako ng mga clinic. Magbigay na lang daw ako libre ng shabo, cocaine, pati heroin. Ko, pibilat siyang ina. Nung <laughs> yung ugok. Sabi ko, sige, you propose that to me. You, baski sa atin magkita. Putang ina mo, sampalin kita. Hindi <laughs> kong matangkad, matangkad mo yan sila. Suntukin ko na yung bayag nila. <laughs> Kalukuha niya. Kaya kami, there's always a, a lot of disagreement. Because uh, this uh, supposedly, alam mo, sila ngayon, they were conquerors, they were colonizers. Everywhere. They, 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 they made it, uh, pati yung mga kahoy natin, lahat-lahat na pinag puputol nila tapos ngayon turuan tayo kung ano ang you know I'll, I'll, I'll just state this uh, in brief 
Here is this guy. He became president. Apparently, from the outside, he would look libertarian. But deep, deep inside, by the way, he was uh, crisscrossing the, the psychological, pati yung pathological uh, barriers ng um, lahat na, tribe, whatever. He misinterprets everything. That is why he contributed to the chaos now going on. And even dito, Kaya kaya ako nagbisita dito. Kaya ako nakikipag-usap. Because of this chaos, everything. I could never. And I said, uh, we are, uh, before the king, I stated, we are a good ally. We are a loyal friends. And we will stand by you. Sabi ko sa kanila. One is that you have treated my countrymen good. You have uh, somehow improved the education of the young because of the remittances of the money by the Filipino worker. We owe you a lot. And that is why I said, uh, we remain to be your ally. And we are by your whatever uh, it is there that uh, needs uh, an ally to do. Yan ang sinasabi. No, the economy is uh, doing fine. Uh, Noon on na hindi na tayo maka exports sa China, there was a slowdown because China was not willing to accept our bananas anymore, our pineapples. Ayaw na tanggapin because of this quality of that, this quality. Alam mo, there were all excuses. Kaya ako pumunta ng China, sabi ko, kayo si Xi Jinping, what have we done to you? What did we, what did we commit wrong? Tell us, what's, what's wrong with my banana? It's all, uh, sabi ng, no, it's not the fruit. It is your dovetailing the foreign policy of uh, countries we do not like. So, nag-move ako. Uh, I said, from now on, I will adopt a neutral, independent policy. So, pumunta ako doon sa kanya, istorya kami. And we became good friends. Now, I'd like to, it is not in my country, but I would like to correct myself uh, along the way dito. I said I will go to the island of Kalayaan, Pag-asa, on June 12 to raise the Filipino flag there. Oh, wala. Yan lagi mahirap. Sige, pak-pak. Wala bang tapos. Tapos, ah, uh, Ang China sent word na please do not do that. Kasi sabi ko, the ten remaining islands there, agawan ito ng lupa eh. You know, sige na yung pasok na yung mga the Taiwanese, the Vietnamese, no, they're, they're, they're having trouble there. Yung mga islands doon na ten na hindi pa occupied, sabi ko kay General Esperon, pati kay Chief of Staff, pati kay Lorenzana, occupy the island. Unahan na natin. Lagyan natin ng flag. Atin na yan. Eh, kasi agawan ito eh. Per, 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 perdigan na ito. Paubusan <laughs> tayo ng ano nito. So, okay. So, usap ko yung China. Why are you? Sabi ko, well, near the Philippines and if there's uh, Iroko's there, uh, reservoir, somebody might use it as a base for a battery of missiles. So I'm claiming it. And I said, I'm not going to put any offensive weapons. So, ano na, ate na yun. And Bingham Rice, so the right side, uh, sabi nila na ate rin yun. Sabi ko, I, I agree. Ate yun. So, let's rename it the Philippine Ridge. And claim it. Sabi ko sa Navy, parking ka lang doon. Pantakot lang man yan. Pero kung magagira, bahala na kayo doon. Pahalangan. <laughs> so, I am officially putting on notice, China and the rest, that uh, kasi ang sabi ng China, what will happen, and every head of state will go there to claim. Kasi nag-agawan eh. Pag sabi niya, 
Savinila, if the, every heads of state of the contending parties there around uh, the West Philippine Sea, they call it the China Sea, will go there to plant their flags, like, there will be likely trouble. So because of our friendship with China, and because we value your friendship, we will not, I will not go there to uh, raise the Philippine flag. Maybe I'll uh, send uh, my son, kasi para just to show that uh, the blood there of the claimant is the son of the... Oh, ibig sabihin, kadugo ko na yan dyan, amin yan. Sabi ng China, well, in the meantime, huwag ka lang pumunta doon. Just do not go there. Please. Okay, ko, yes, I, I, I will correct myself. Uh, because we value the friendship of China. Kasi ngayon, lahat kayo nagkulang na ng saging, naghahanap tayo ng saging to, to make up for the shortfall. Kasi maraming order, tanggap ng tanggap. Yung iba namang sa ibang lugar, stop uh, planting bananas. Kasi hindi na makapasok eh. Now, we are 100% restored. Yung sa pineapple, naghahabol tayo kasi wala na rin, uh, nobody was planting pineapple again because of the severe restrictions on importation by China. Now, binuksan niya, we are short by about 40% sa demand. At sabi ng China, you send, uh, you sell to us anything because half of the year it's frigid. Wala masyado kasi malamig mo yung China. Ang kanya is really dependent also on uh, the importation of food. So sabi niya, you can export everything from your own country and we will buy it. Ayaw mo pa niyan? Salamat. So out of respect, uh, and this will be relayed, I know that you're listening. Because of your goodwill and friendship shown to us, I will not go to any of the islands. I, not, maybe I will send my son just to show that our claim is really good for all generations of Filipinos. Wag mo lang ko Hindi sila magpadala, hindi rin ako magpadala, sabi ko, but just allow the Coast Guard. Sabi ko, total, Coast Guard mo lang. We do not use the gray ships. Gray ships, mga Navy yan eh. Military na yan. So, Coast Guard lang. So, this is each other there. Kikita-kita lang sila do, para sila naglaro. Ngayon, smiling na. Kasi noon, alam mo na, pasupladuhan. So now, we are good. And I would like to preserve that uh, goodwill between the Philippines and China. It has benefited us in so many ways that life is almost uh, maganda na. All time, lahat, nag-improve na tayo, economy is uh, moving. As long as there is no corruption, the Philippines will rise. Gurado yan. It was corruption that was bringing us down. At ngayon, pati yung mga the oligarchs of the Philippines, yun yun sila. You know, inquirer, inquirer owes government one billion. Hanggang ngayon hindi pa binabayaran. And you know what? Kim Inares, bilitaw niya, okay na. So when I go back, I will raise hell. Kayong mga inquirer, kayong mga crusaders kuno, gusto ninyo tama lahat, pero kayo, hindi nagbabayad. Ang ABS-CBN, nandito yan, Isa pa kayo, puro drama na lang. Wala kang di mag-atake ng tao. Pati basura ng eleksyon, 200 million daw ako, sabi ni Estrellanes. Putang ina, wala akong perang ganun. You show me a record. 
I was a candidate then and I said, open up everything. I am the president now. You have the liberty. Maski balik ta rin mo yung Central Bank. If I have that money, I will resign today. Wala ang pera. Ang sinabi ko, ang anak ko, may grab and corruption, inday, si Purong, pati yung isang anak ko, ayun, babae lang man yung kanya. Si Sebastian, pag na-involve ito sa corruption, I, you, I give you my commitment. I will step down. Wala akong illusions dito. You ask me if I am exceedingly happy? Maligayang maligay ako, Presidente ako. I'll tell you, no. I am not. Eh, bakit ka tumakbo? Kaya, nga, kaya, kaya ako nagtatanong sa inyo hanggang ngayon eh. <laughs> bakit ba tayo tumakbo? Tang ina niya. No, but, you know, uh, I am there, so... But if you insist on an answer, I would say that uh, at this time of my life, I no longer the need one. Tapos na ako sa ganun. 20, almost 40 years. Tapos na ako sa daughter, the adulation and the clapping of the hands. Sa inyo lang, kasi nandito kayo. Wala mo rin mag-clap sa akin sa labas. Kayo lang man. Totoo yan. I do not need the position. Sabi nila, ma, matanggal ako impeachment ko dito. Do not bother me with that because I'm, I'm always a believer of destiny. Yung pagka-presidente ko, destiny yan. Baski saan ko tignan na bakit ako nanalo. Kaya nga yung, yung itong ABS-CBN. <laughs> publish ng publish. Ngayon, may mga journalistic investigators mga kayo. May mga ano mang kayo na ano, edi hanapin na ninyo para matanggal na ako sa gobyerno. Sabihin ko sa inyo ha, ikaw mga mukhang pera kayong ibig-ibig. <laughs> Tangin ako, meron talaga, sabihin ko, I will resign tomorrow, I will deliver it to your headquarters. Tangin ang yan, pati itong inquirer, bayaran mo muna yung 1 billion bago tayo mag-usap ulit kung tatkaloy ba ay mga prosedor. Ganun yung mga oligarchs. Ito yung si Mighty King. Nag-forge ng, ano, alam mo, parang mista ko yan. Kasi adapted ako ng Class 67 sa PMA. Unong-una pa, yung syntaxes, pumunta ng Dabao yan. Gusto ko kausapin yung congressman ng Ways and Means. Taga-Dabao eh, ungab. Ngayon, sabi ko, Adre, kaya nag-iwan ng pera. Sabi naman niya, may iniwan ako. Sabi ko, alis na siya. May kausap ako ng mga tao doon sa restaurant. Sabi ni Bong, may iniwan. Sabi ko, putang ina, ano yan? Tingnan mo, pera. Sabi ko, Bong, usa uli mo. So, recorded yan. Kasi sabi ko, umakyat ka sa aeroplano doon mo iha. Return it there. Huwag na. Kaya nandiyan yan sa, I'm sure may monitoring... Umakyat si Bong, binigay talaga yung pera sa kanya. Ganon talaga sa kanya. Tapos nung Disembre, binigyan niya ako ng baril. Golden gun. James Bond. Sana yung babae. O ba diba, si James Bond, mayroon ba talaga yung babae? Iyon na yung baril, yung babae na lang akin. Wala na, hindi na masyado, ano. Pagka yun, bakit? Ikaw, pwede ka ba? Ah, pagkaka mo gano'n? Gano'n yan. Magtanong kayo ng matanda mo sabi, Oh, puta, okay pa ako. Ah, puta, bulador. Pero kung magsabi na, ah, basta may blue lang, Biagra. <laughs> Eto. Sino man. Sino man dito ang kaedad ko na hindi gumagamit. Kayo. Ang sarap ko. Bulador ng ulo ko. Dito. Si Andana lang. Pati si 
Senator Cayetano. <laughs> Itong dito. <laughs> Malayo ang tuwing. <laughs> Pero, sapilitan. Kasi napilitan ako eh. Eh, nandiyan na rin yan. Eh, sa pilitan. Ah, uh, pag ano, wala yan. Uh, no more ka. So, yan ang mensahe ko sa inyo. The military is also good. Alam mo, dito sa I am talking with the communists. For the first time, uh, nag-uusap tayo. Less violence. I'm talking with the Moro Islamic uh, Liberation Front in my left. I'm talking with Normi Suarez, uh, MNLF, as a uh, M, uh, MN. So, wala na sana tayong problema except terrorism, pati drugs. Yun ang medyo hirap ako dyan. Kaya ang buhay, life is never fair. Noong una na ang Ang, ang, ang kalaban natin, ang MI, MN, pati komunista, pag sinuwerte ako, baka, baka makuha ako. Makuha ako because ang mga komunista, they are also hurrying me up. Uh, Normi Suarez is forming his own team. But itong sa MI, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, we're okay. We're, we're talking and uh, we might get it. Uh, before uh, early next year. Yun ang ano. So, lahat ginagawa ko. Kikipag-usap lang ako. Minsan, alam ko yung military, may, ano, marami na matay sa kanila. But sinabi ko, look, guys, we have been at it. We have been at war with them for 50 years. Do you want another 50 years of bloodshed in this country? You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a president that wants peace. I'm not a wartime president. I have to talk about peace. Because that is my duty. That is my... Sabi sa kanya, yung iba naman, ah, mag-marcelo si Duterte, no? yung pinapakita nila constitution. Non, nothing of that sort. Dito lang yan. The long and short of my oath to both is, and me, whatever comes out from my mouth. That is really to protect and defend the Filipino nation. Hindi <laughs> ako kailangan mag Marcelo, Marcelo. Huwag na yan. Gado malayo yan. Gawin ko ang dapat gawin ko and I will just rely on my oath to both. It's there. If you read the whole context there, it, it says just one thing. To protect and defend the Filipino nation. And I will do it. And I said, uh, I will correct myself along the way. If I commit mistakes, that is natural. I'm just a human being. Maybe the frailty also of uh, my character. I, I, I do not pretend to be the, 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 the cleanest guy there about. Turoyang makkorap. Yung ano pa? Yung... Yung ano? Uh, alam mo na? <laughs> there are only two happiness in this life. The woman you love. And money. But if you are into it, corruption, uh, wala sa akin yan. The, the, the woman you... Uh, no, the, the women that you love... Kasi hindi naman lahat-lahat makatuloy mo. Yun ang tiga bigay ng ligaya sa buhay mo. So, magpakabait tayong lahat. Ako, holy na ako. <laughs> holy na talaga, holy na. Holy na. Kaya nahuli naman, papaano pa. <laughs> De? <laughs> Oh. 
Good. What? Uh, it's okay. Uh, uh, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Compliment, actually. Uh, so, what else uh, is there to to say to you? Uh, if you want some uh, questions answered, I am ready. You can take the floor. And, uh, yes. Uh, you can have. Uh, let's have a, a short time for uh, an open forum. You can come. Uh, you can come up here, and say. Uh, you allow. You, so she can. You can take the. Just allow her to take the lectern on the other side. Wala na kawar de. Yes, ja, please allow her to. to Hello, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. My first question is, where is the Department of OFW? Department of That is the first question. The Department of OFW. We yes. want it. Yes, uh, yung OFW was being discussed by me. Uh, OFW will be separate from the Department of Labor. It's coming, but it would need Congress. Pare, kasali na time, there will be a separate sa mga sailors. Maritime authority will also be separated. Okay, uh, any question? Mr. President, your presence here is highly appreciated and uh, thank you so much for paying so much attention for OFWs. Mm -hmm. In behalf of all OFWs here, say hooray! Yes. Mr. President, magtagal na po kami nagaantay ng ambassador and I would like to take this opportunity to endorse Madam Imelda Panolong because she has the huge, she has the huge knowledge of for being an ambassador. So, um, this is from my own position. And, we, will, uh, we will consider it. Pero ganito, yeah, uh, the creation of a department does not belong to me. It belongs to Congress. We have proposed a separate body department from the labor is a separate yung OFW, so nakatutok yan. As a matter of fact, I have ordered na yung lahat ng agencies and BI, BIR, nandoon na lahat sila. Sir, one more, sir, very important one. Uh, dito po kasi sa Middle East, we really need someone to focus on uh, our cases. I am advocate for 17 years. And thus, if we can have undersecretary for OFW only for Middle East, if we can consider this, sir, this will be very important for us. If you might want to just be patient, sabi ko nga, uh, Secretary Bellio and I are talking to propose to Congress a separate department of OFW alone. Oh, yan. Pati yung sa maritime, uh, for the maritime, uh, sa mga uh, sailors natin, iba na rin ang kanila. Yes, uh, yeah, this will be an opportunity for you to, it's a learning process. Uh, yes, sir, you can ask any question. Good evening po, sir, uh, Mr. President. Yes. Uh, gusto kong lang sanang i, ano, i, na kailangan sana ng National ID system katulad ng Saudi Arabia. Ah, okay. Gusto lang namin po yun. It's also pending in Congress. I'm only nine months sa pagka-presidente ko po. Okay, thank so, you po, sir. We're working on it, actually, because it's good. Thank you. 
Okay, walang problema. Hello, Tatay. Um, I have no questions at all. I just want to say thank you that you have given us hope. Thank you so much. It will come to pass. Mahal na Pangulo, unang sa lahat, nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon. Kristiyano at Muslim kami, ibinigay ka ng Panginoon sa amin. 1980 na kami dito, barangay kami ni ni Marcos, uh, kami po yung una mga nurses dito. That was 1980. Wala pong presidente talagang nakatulong na malaki kung hindi kayo po. OFW, pagmamahal sa sundalo, pagmamahal po sa, sa community. Ang inihiling ko lang po dito, dahil matagal na po ako dito, kailangan po namin ng hospital para po doon sa mga stranded. Dahil hindi po talaga tinatanggap ngayon sa hospital. Kailangan-kailangan po ito. Number two, bigyan kami ng abogado. Abogado talaga na para ilaban. Sa totoo po, nagpapasalamat ako sa community, sa religion, sa kristyano, muslim, sa mga school, sa mga hospital. King Faisal, King Saud, King Khalid, uh, King Pahad Medical City, ito po ang mga nurses at doktor na tumutulong na malaki na hindi nyo po alam. Marami pong bulag. Hindi naman po kami inaano namin ang Philippine Embassy at Polo. Sana ang Polo at ang Philippine Embassy mag... Sana po ang Polo at ang Philippine Embassy, hindi sila nag-aaway. Dapat magtulungan sila para tulungan ito mga stranded. No. Matagal na po ako dito. Marami pong bulag. Kailangan buksan natin ang ating isipan. Sa totoo lang po. Yes, ma'am. Marami ng bagay. Ako po ay apo ni Aguinaldo. Ito po ay hiniling ko at si, ako po ay nagpapasalamat po rin kay Alina Artikulo, ambassador ng mga nurses dito sa King Faisal Hospital. Stand up, Alina Artikulo. Sister Alina Artikulo. Yes, ma'am. Magandang gabi po, yes, Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte. Ako po si Alina Artikulo, Presen presidente po ako ng Philippine Nursing Association dito po sa Riyadh. Ako po'y uh, 22 years na po dito, ganun din po na tumutulong sa mga stranded. Siguro po maganda na mas mag kami pong mga citizen ay eh, mag-promote ng partnership sa ating gobyerno. Maganda pong nagsasabi tayo ng ating mga issues and concerns sa ating presidente. Pero sana tinatanong din po natin kung ano din po yung ginawa po natin para makasuporta sa kapwa Pilipino. Uh, Ma'am, let me announce it. Uh, ay, uh, hindi ko lang sinabi ito sa inyo. Pero uh, uh, Bebot has something to say to you. Uh, ito, maganda ito. And uh, I'm ready to do it. Uh, mga minamahal kong mga OFW, uh, gusto ko malaman ninyo na pagkatapos ng announcement ng Crown Prince granting amnesty sa mga OFWs natin, ay nagpadala kami ng augmentation team para tulungan sila para ma-comply dun sa mga requirements ng amnesty program ng Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. At marami na po ang nakapag-avail. Katunayan nga po, we are arranging a transportation for 250 OFWs who hopefully will be uh, back to our country 
in time for the return of President Rodrigo Duterte. Nais din namin nung malaman ninyo na yung mga unpaid claims na mga OFWs natin ay under process. And one of the uh, efforts of our augmentation team is to determine the validity of their claims. And if the validity is established, then OWA is willing to advance the money claims of all the OFWs in Saudi Arabia. Yun po ang aming ginagawa para sa inyo po. Maraming salamat po. Mabuti ho kayo nagtanong kayo para malaman ninyo. By the time mag-land ako pa uwi, kasama ko na ang mga undocumented, pati yung mga iliga na punta dito. They will all be ferried home. Ang first batch niyan, pag landing ko sa Dabao, landing yung eroplano, dala sila. And we will continue to do that. Hindi lang kasi ninyo alam, okay, hindi mo kayo nagtatanong, that is why this is uh, as good as any other time to ask your question. We are working very hard for you. Kaya nga ako pumunta dito, na, nauna nga kayo eh. Para i-announce ko na nakausap ko yung si King and uh, he has committed so many things for you. Hintayin na lang ninyo. Pero yung naghirap, anytime you want to go home, sabihin lang ninyo, dadalhin ko na kayo. The first batch is, when I land, I land also. Yung maganda na gusto nang umuwi, Katabi kita sa aeroplano, bakante. Yes, uh, I'm willing to I, I'm willing to, to answer your question. Later. Wala kaming hangarin dito except your welfare. That is why this is my first destination. Salam alaikum, Mr. President. Alaikum salam. Ako po si Mr. Saidali Malik. Ako po yung Secretary General ng Duterte Middle East Movement, which is now diversified movement of empowered migrants. Heart-to-heart -heart question po, Mr. President. We have been usually addressed as modern day heroes. Ang tanong ko lang po, Mr. President, wala po ba kaming karapatan being OFW to represent public office in the government like to serve the Filipino overseas and give the ambassadorship of, for the first time in Saudi Arabia? Here's your congressman or the OFW. Yeah. Uh, idagdag ko lang, sir. The Duterte Middle East Movement just now and uh, Madam Sheng Plaza is our witness. We are part of the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between the Saudi government and the Philippine government for those investors. Kasama po kami. The DMM. Para doon sa $46 billion na pinirma natin ngayon sa Chamber of Commerce. Very Ganyan good, po, sir. kagaling ang mga OFW. You. And I will, uh, I will promise you that your dream will be realized. I am good until 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, good evening, Mr. President, and sa inyong mga kasama. Uh, ako, po, ako po ay si Dr. Jill French Paspe. Isa akong dentista na nagtatrabaho dito sa Saudi Arabia. Nagpapasalamat ako dahil sa isang executive order galing kay President uh, Gloria Arroyo noon na nagsasaad na ang lahat ng mga Pilipino dito magkaroon ng special professional license examination. Yung mga hindi pumasa na pumunta dito, yung mga engineers, nurses, mga dentists na nag-work as dental assistant na mabigyan sila ng exam dito right. ng PRC. The problem, sir, ganito, ang problema ng mga dentist, hinaing ito ng mga dentista. The first two years, pinagbigyan kami. This year, hindi kami pinagbigyan. Nagtataka kami, sumulat kami. We have around 30 uh, ready dentist to take the examination, the license. Nirefuse kami ng PRC. Dahil daw ang aming dental board of examinees, busy daw sila. 
Is it pwede na busy sila? Eh, may mga overseas Filipino dito na gusto magkuha ng exam. Ni-refuse kami. Bebot will... Uh, si Belio. <laughs> Ma'am, good evening po. Yung pong hiling ninyo na mag-conduct dito ng examination, ang PRC, gagawin na po yan. Uh, Ni-refuse kayo ng dating ano, leadership. Lahat ng PRC po, gagawa na lahat ng paraan. No? Dito ang gagawin para sa inyo. Hindi, gagawa. Isasama natin ang dentistry. Ito pa. Lahat to professional. Dito na. Kaya yan, na, matagal na ho yung pinaplano namin para sa inyo. Uh, everything that would make you comfortable here will be done by your government. Yes. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, sabi nila, uh, I, I have, I'm going uh, to Bahrain. Uh, I, have, I have about a few minutes with you. Go ahead. Last, last, last. Oh, oh. last three questions, ha? Ah. Oh. Uh, bigyan mo natin yung pinaka... Last na to, last. Matanda na babae. Meron kanina, yung babae. Oh, yan. Last three questions, ah. Okay. Yan. Ma'am, sige ma'am, yung question nyo. Magandang gabi po sa inyong President at sa lahat po na pumunta dito. Una sa lahat, maraming maraming salamat po talaga. I'm just an ordinary citizen and malaking ano po, kagalakan sa akin ito. Isa lang ang pwede ko pong... Una sa lahat, thank you po sa pag... Uh, being the President of the Philippines. A lot of things that you have done and accomplished. Isa lang po ang sasabihin ko, sana po pwedeng itaas ang rate ng OFW Filipino dito sa Riyadh po. At hindi lang sa Riyadh, sa whole Middle East, itaas po. Kasi I was working since 1998, ganun lang pa rin ang rate. Yun po ang pinaka the best sa lahat po, nurses, engineers, lahat po, laborers. Yung rate po. Sige ma, magandang ano yan, magandang suggestion yes. po yan. And, And we will discuss this with the Minister of Labor of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia po. Salam at sa'yo ka, sir. Yes, thank you. You're the man with the balls. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, next. Mayong gabi, Mr. President. I am Adel Guru Alim. Ang taong pong ito ay alam niya ang topografiya at geografiya ng Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Kaya ini-endorso po in behalf of OFW, we are the Duterte Middle East Movement, Dr. Abdul Hanan Tago for Ambassadorship. Marami pong salamat. We will consider the name. Okay, last, ah, last. Ah, bigyan natin yung, ah, yun, yung naka-blue, naka-long sleeve ng itim. Ayan. Ikaw, ikaw, ikaw. O, ikaw, ikaw. O, ayan. Ay, sir. Tatay Tigong, magandang gabi po. Welcome to Saudi Arabia. Ako po, si... Ako po si Toto Gonzales from Alcobar, isa po sa mga volunteers sa Filipino organizations. Sir, ang concerns lang po namin, ang mga Pilipino po doon sa Eastern Region, around 300,000 po. Sa loob po ng ilang dekada hanggang ngayon, wala po kaming consulate. Four hundred kilometers po yung travel namin mula sa Kobar pa punta sa Riyadh at yung budget po ng ng impasye ngayong taon binawasan pa po kaya inihingi po namin sa pamagitan mo po magkaroon po sana ng consulate or anything na magkaroon po kami ng hindi sige tatay tigo maraming salamat po. No, 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 no. We'll give it to them. Bigyan niyo ako ng tatlong buwan, and you will have it. Ganap, ganap. Ah, okay, boss. Apat na magsabi, boss. Two, three, 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 two, three
ang aking flight is overdue. So, kailangan nagadikit na ako. I have to go. I have to. May meeting pa ako sa government officials dito. Sa airport.